this video I will cover packaging, recycling and sustainability symbols in the United States. We're going to start with the Resin Identification Code or RIC, the BPI Certification Mark and finally the FSC Recycle Label. And these are not necessarily all labels in existence in the US but this is what we could find when we did this research in earlier this year in 2022. So let's begin with the resin identification code. And it essentially consists of a Mobius loop combined with a, a code that in turn identifies the, the type of resin or the type of plastic. Could be could be PP, could be HEPE, PET, etc. And okay, don't take a screenshot right now because this is just a stock photo. I'm not sure if these codes are accurate or up to date. I think you actually have to buy these. I think it's one of those ASTM standards. In any case, the the RIC, it identifies the plastic type, that's the point. And in turn, that is helpful to say the least, uh, crucial uh, when it comes to sorting and recycling uh, waste plastics. Okay, so as I showed on the previous slide, um, you have different different codes depending on, on the type of plastic, like one for PET, two for HTPE. Second, companies using this code should also follow the requirements of ASTM D7611 and that's a standard that you can find on the ASTM website that yeah you would likely have to buy that one. Finally something's very important you can't use the RIC to imply that your packaging can be recycled while that could be the case the presence of a uh, the Mobius loop and a code doesn't magically make a say a PVC plastic recyclable even though perhaps it could be but it's not necessarily the case okay so this is a quote from uh, part 260 guides for use of environmental marketing claims and you can find this on the ECFR website so in any case what we go here is that some company selling yogurt use the resin identification code apparently and they use it in a, well, it says here, right? It, it, on, on the front label of the container, close to the proximity of the, the product name and the logo. And, and they, for some, they, they then um, believe that this was sort of implying that, oh, look at us, where, yeah, this is, this is um, uh, environmentally friendly packaging or something. And clearly they don't like that. Um, I recommend that you go to the EC, ECFR website and, and read this example for yourself because you also find a number of other examples. Essentially it comes down to, well, they don't like greenwashing. I guess nobody does. So yeah, you have to be careful um, when, when using this symbol. Then we have the Biodegradable Products Institute certification mark or the BPI mark. So the BPI certification scheme allows manufacturers and brand owners to, to verify that the, the material in question is compostable and biodegradable. So it goes beyond just uh, attaching a, a logo, or, sorry, attaching a, a identifier. Now, the scheme requires that the material is compliant with certain standards and you've got different standards depending on uh, the type of material. I'll get to that on the next page. And then you must also, well, the material must then undergo a certification procedure. So BPI must actually verify that the material in question is actually uh, compostable and biodegradable as a whole point. So you can't just decide that for yourself. Now, in order to, to, to be, cons well, to use the mark, the, the fundamental point is, of course, that the material is in fact biodegradable and compostable and, and, and in order to claim that you need to make sure that it is compliant with certain standards which I believe that testing is part of the certification procedure. I would be surprised if that was not the case. And as you can see here there are different test methods say uh, ASTM D5338 then we have an ISO standard here for, uh, for plastics, disintegration of plastics to be specific and I Although I can't say I'm an expert when it comes to this specific um, uh, symbol and, and the corresponding scheme, um, it's reasonable to assume that they will apply the 
testing process depending on the material and the corresponding standard. And that leads us to the, the fees. As is always the case with, well, not always, but oftentimes the case when it comes to recyclability or biodegradability uh, symbols, there's a certification process which, of course, must be financed by someone, and that's the brand that wants to use it. So at the time that we did this research, which was earlier in, in, in 2022, the fee was, as you can see here, 1500 US, and that's for first time applicants. And then there's also a renewal. I can't comment on the conditions for that renewal, but I imagine that it's likely anyway, that you have to go through this procedure again at a reduced fee of a thousand US. Okay, finally, we have the FSC recycle label. So unlike the previous, which concerns uh, compostability and, and also identifying the material, the recycle label indicates that the, the packaging material, such as this box, has been made from recycled material in full or in part. So for starters, the FSC, FSC it stands for the, uh, I think it's the Forest Stewardship Council, and it's, it's, as far as I know, it's not a US organization, and this is something you find worldwide. I saw this symbol on this drink container on McDonald's here in Hong Kong, for example. So it, it's present worldwide. I think it's the same European country, I could be wrong. In any case, they have more than one uh, compliance symbol, but in this video it's specifically about uh, recyclability of packaging and so on, sustainability. So this is the only one I will cover. Now, as mentioned, the FSC recycle label implies that the product is made from 100% recycled content. And there is also the alternative, which is the mixed label that uh, states that the, the packaging is made from a mix of new materials and recycled materials. Got these two different types. Now, again, it comes down to a, a certification scheme, um, which is quite extensive. The way that FSC operates is that they go all the way to the source, to the plantation, okay? Or in this case, I believe it will be the recycling plant. And then every step, well, every link in the supply chain, meaning every company that's involved from the, uh, the recycling plant to the, the pulp, uh, producer because there still has to be a pulp producer somewhere uh, to the packaging manufacturer and all the way to your brand needs certification and transfer certificates between this because otherwise there's no way that this is possible to 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 trace this to verify so in short you can't simply ask your suppliers hey is this used uh, from from re recycled recycled paper and and then uh, stamp one of these symbols on and call it the day. No, that's not the way it works. You have to go through this procedure. Your supply must be certified. Their supply must be certified. And you also have to pay a fee before you can use this symbol. So finally, then, how do you verify that the packaging is correctly labeled? Imagine going through all this and then it turns out your suppliers are screwing it up. That's something that happened to all of us. It's absolutely instrumental that you apply one of these uh, labels to your artwork in a way that your supply just can't fail what you do is you go into adobe illustrator you drag and drop the the resin identification code or the fsc symbol if that's what you're using assuming you have the permission right and you make sure that it's incorporated, is implemented straight into your into your artwork. You send that to your factory. What you should never do is to rely on your supplier to print the correct symbol in the correct size at the correct uh, position. As mentioned, with the resident identification code, you could have issues simply because of the placement. If it's too prominent, as they say, right? So you should never leave that to a supplier to determine for you. And finally, make sure that you always check the packaging artwork before shipment. That's absolutely crucial. Okay, that's everything I had to say in this video. If you have any questions, then I recommend that you write a comment either on our website or you can also do the same if you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you for watching.